Hey everyone, welcome back to Camp Keyframe. My name is Bas, and in today's video, I'm going to show you a simple button press animation. So I've got this background here, let's lock it. I've got the button and I've got the button press text. So I'm going to parent the text to the button. So this now controls everything. And first off, I'm going to add an effect to this uh, button here, give it a bit of a shadow. So go to right click and layer styles, drop shadow, and then open that up. And then make it a size a lot bigger, like that. The distance maybe a little bit further apart. And then I want this only on the bottom here. Yeah, like that, maybe down the opacity down a little bit. Yeah, now we have this button kind of hovering above. Looks good. And then I'm going to uh, create a circle here. We can also, of course, create a cursor, like a mouse that's moving, but I'm gonna create a circle like someone is tapping the button with their finger on a phone or something. So put the stroke on none, and the color can be uh, white, the fill, that's fine. Create a circle here. And uh, let's get the opacity down to let's say 30 or something, yeah, that's fine. Uh, no, because now it's not visible on that on that shape anymore. So I'm gonna actually make the color, um, let's make it this this one. Yeah, that's fine. All right, so now uh, I want this one kind of to move in. Uh, so go to P for position, and let's call, call this tap. And then a um, second later, I'm going to place that over there, like it's pressing, like not in the middle, but we won't, because you won't do that, because it's kind of here, like a bit more realistic. And then um, I'm going to go in here, and if I zoom in here, and if I go to my pen tool, I can click on this, and I can kind of create this nice shape here. And uh, let's do the same for this one as well. So I kind of want this to have a little bit of a, a little of a wavy movement when it's going in. So I'm going to drag them out. So first I want this thing to pop up. So pressing S on my keyboard to scale, go down, press zero, and then give this some easing. I'm using flow, this plugin here. So it kind of pops up. And I see it's not moving from the middle. I want to change that, so I'm gonna to go to my move anchor point tool and click and place the anchor point in the middle here. So now it kind of scales up and moves. So if I press U on my keyboard, I see all the keyframes. Give this some more nice and Nice easing as well. Can be a bit faster. Yeah, and then have these kind of overlap a little bit. Just to get this nice little animation going. Click, yeah, there it is. And then for this one, I'm going to go to scale as well. So click on the um, keyframe button here and create a new one. And then we're going to go here and go to, let's say 85, let's put good. Copy the first keyframe here and paste that over there. So now it kind of scales down and up again, like it's pressing on the button, as you can see. I'm going to actually scale this down a bit more to 70 maybe, so it really presses it. Yeah, and it can be a lot quicker. Like proof. Give this some easing again. Yeah, now it kind of presses it quickly and it kind of taps it. So it scales up, it moves and then click, it can be a really bit, a little bit sooner. Click, click, tap, all right. So now the button press itself, or first let's kind of, when it taps this one, click, and it kind of maybe fades out. Doesn't really matter, but it's gone. And the layer there, yeah. Fine, okay, cool. So this, these three keyframes are important because I'm going to animate the rest of it uh, to that little button here, to, to those keyframes. Because I want the, what I'm going to do is animate this button to kind of scale down a little bit. So also open the S scale, click, and then copy that keyframe and paste it on the last one here. Paste, and then on the middle one here, just scale this one down a little bit as well. Let's say 88, let's make it 85. I don't think that it should be too much. Give this the same easing. Maybe that's a bit too much. Yeah, that's too much. So maybe put this at 90. Yeah, maybe these two give it a little bit out. So we get a little bit more time when it pops back up. Yeah, nice. Button press, click. Cool. And then uh, also we're going to animate the shadow a little bit. So when it, because when it gets pressed, it gets closer to the background, to the, to the floor, let's say. So I'm going to open this up, go to my layer style here, drop shadow, 
and then I'm going to go to the first keyframe here as well and create a um, uh, a keyframe for let's say the size and the opacity and then copy both of those and paste them on the last one here and then because it needs to be the same and then here when it's down I want the uh, size to be a little bit smaller because then it kind of gets closer so it's it's more visible it's less less soft and maybe put the opacity up a bit so it gets a little bit darker maybe size back up a little bit so now we get this cool yeah select them and get the same easing let's see how this looks nice yeah really small subtle little effect but it kind of adds to it nice and we can add a little bit because this is basically it this is more than enough to have a nice button press we can add a little little bit of spice here to grow to my uh, the pen tool uh, fill on none and the stroke on white and let's do the stroke on five i don't know how big that is click and uh, click again here while holding shift go perfectly straight this uh, maybe make it like eight or something nice and then i'm going to put the anchor point here with my pen behind tool at the bottom like here somewhere i'm going to open it up let's call this the stripe i'm going to open this up and go to add trim paths path paths paths and then go to my end here and then drag that out and then zero so now this kind of boop, opens up and then to start and then from that goes from zero to 100 so now it grows in again so now we have this little thingy give this some easing some exponential and this easing how this looks is like this kind of goes really f uh, slow and then really fast and then really slow at the end as well cool close that up nice i'm gonna do, let's give this some rounded corners uh, i could do that by going into shape one stroke one and then go to butt cap and round cap nice press u to open all my keyframes so it's yeah, and I think we can go a little bit faster here. Yeah, and kind of play with these effects, with these trim paths. Yeah, and I'm going to cut this one off here, this layer, and here as well at the end, like that. So now we get this little sh little thing going. Boop. I think we can go faster even. Really, a really quick little tap. Little Yeah, that's it. So now I'm going to press Command D on this one, duplicate it. Press R on my keyboard to rotate it. Or no W, sorry, for the rotation uh, rotation tool. I'm going to rotate it to the left and duplicate the bottom one again and rotate that to the right so we get this nice little thingy here. And let's uh, comp these together. So pressing Command Shift C, um, stripes. All right, click this button here like that. And now um, we get this little extra effect here. Maybe it's too much, I don't know. So when these, uh, let's go to the tab here, press U, so I have my keyframes here. So on this one, oop, on this one, the scale, I'm gonna press, place this one here. Boop. Nice, that's a little extra effect for you guys there. Um, yeah, cool, so that's it, uh, easy button press effect. Uh, thanks for watching. If you want to download the project files for this video, you can do that by supporting me on my Patreon page, where you also get extended videos and exclusive videos only on Patreon. Um, yeah, that's it, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you on the next tutorial on CapGeFrame. Bye-bye.